you for that beautiful song. It's, it's true that his eye is on the sparrow. And I know, I know that I know that he watches over me. Great and glorious truth. <laughs> now you have your Bibles with you this morning. If you will, turn with me to the book of Daniel, chapter 5. The book of Daniel, chapter 5. Before I speak this morning, let's pause for just a moment and ask God by His Holy Spirit to touch our lives and help us to listen together to what the Spirit says to the church today. Let us pray. Father, we rejoice in the word that you've given unto us. We rejoice in the fact that His eye is on the sparrow. And we know that you watch over your children. Father, what a great assurance this is. In difficult times, in times of problems, and times when life is not so kind, it's good to know that our God is concerned about each of us. Lord, I pray now that by your Holy Spirit you would open our hearts and our minds and help us today that we might be in tune with the Spirit of God. And I pray, Lord, that you will speak to us individually. And I pray that we may be encouraged in our faith. And I pray that if there be those here this morning who need to make commitments to Christ, I pray that before this hour is over, that there will be great rejoicing in heaven. <coughs> for those who will make that commitment to Christ our Lord. So, Father, to this end, speak to us now in Jesus' name. Amen. It's just common sense. Now is the time to prepare for the future. So goes the end for an investment firm. It just makes common sense. Now is the time to prepare for the future. How secure is your future this morning? If you have graduated from college recently or graduating very in the very near future from college, you know the job market is very, very limited. Many young people graduating from college will be unable to find a job in the field for which they have prepared. If you are graduating from high school, the job market is also very limited. If you are a high school dropout, the picture is very, very, very dark. And even if for those who may work for a very financially secure business, there is reason for concern. Because many quote unquote stable companies just in the last few years have gone under. With other very, very stable companies, there have been massive layoffs. How secure is your future? I'm sure that in these very difficult times, you have thought about this in your own life. No matter what your profession, no matter what you may be doing with your life, it must have crossed your mind, how secure is my future? If you were to list today all of your assets, Everything that you would consider as an asset in your life. <coughs> and you would also list all of your liabilities. And then you would stand back and look at that. How secure would your future be? And if on the other hand you had an option, and you were given the choice you can choose anything you want, to make your future secure, what would you choose? 
If you had the option this morning to choose anything you wanted to make your future secure, what would you choose? There are some who would say, well, if to be really secure in my future, I would like to have enough money in the bank that I could live off of the interest for the rest of my life. I think that would be pretty secure living. Others may want to kind of, if you had your choice, you may say, well, you know, let me just really go out on a limb. If I could choose anything I wanted to make my future secure, I think I would choose to be a movie star with a multi-million dollar contract. I think I could probably make it on that. Others may say, well, you know, that's not really my line, but... I would like to be a great musician, well-known with tremendous, tremendous contracts with music companies and had all of these multi-million dollar contracts and I would be very, very secure for my future. Or perhaps there are others who maybe look at it a little differently and say, well, if I really had my choice, if I could choose anything I want to make my future secure, I would choose to be a professional athlete with a tremendous, tremendous multi-million dollar contract. If I had that, I believe that I would be secure in my future. When I was very, very young growing up, I loved the Wild Wild West. I think I read every book in our little library in the country on the Wild Wild West. And I used to think growing up, wow, I would love to live back then. And I would love to have been one of those ranchers with all of these cattle and life just so pleasant provided. I had enough cowboys to protect me from the rustlers and the, uh, the gunslingers. I think that would be pretty secure. Or how would you like to live in a day when kings were kings? And you could be a king. With absolute authority, absolute power, absolute wealth, everything at your disposal. What if you could choose to live in the days of Belshazzar in our scripture lesson this morning? A man who, had, who lived in a time when his country was at the very pinnacle of success. He had tremendous power. He had tremendous authority, tremendous wealth. Everything he wanted, all he had to do was speak the word. And immediately, anything in his kingdom, he could have. How would you like to live then? How would you like to have that kind of security? I've got it made. Anything I want, I just speak the word. And everyone jumps at my command. Let's look at our first verse this morning in Daniel chapter 5. Daniel chapter 5, Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousands. Everybody that was anybody was at this great feast. I mean, from all over his kingdom, he had invited in all of the great, powerful leaders. And of course, he's at the head of the line. With all of his power and all of his authority, he wants to show off. And so there's this tremendous power, this tremendous party with everyone coming in and, and enjoying feasting and having a good time and, and dropping names of everybody they knew and just to be there and, and to enjoy this tremendous time together. And during the time of the great feast, when everyone was having a tremendous time, having a ball, into this great party walked an uninvited guest. As a matter of fact, the uninvited guest was only a hand. Into this great party where everything was going on, suddenly this king, with all of his power and all of his wealth, 
He looked up on the walls of the palace. And on this plaster wall, he saw a hand. And this hand began to write as he was watching. And when Belshazzar saw that hand writing on the wall, suddenly he became filled with fear. I don't know what this means. What's going on? And the Bible says that even his knees smote against each other with great fear. And he called out to the only thing he knew to call out to. He said, bring in the, the Chaldeans. Bring in those who are, who are familiar with witchcraft. I want to know what this means. And so in come the Chaldeans. In came the, the people that were gifted in witchcraft. And they looked upon the wall and they saw the writing. But they couldn't tell what the writing meant. The king said, listen, I'll give you tremendous wealth. I will reward you richly if you can just tell me what it says. And they couldn't. In the midst of all of this confusion, everything going on, into the palace hall walks the queen mother. And she says to the king, O oh, king, live forever. Don't worry about it. Because there's someone living here in your kingdom who can tell you what the writing is and what it means. And his name is Daniel. The king sends for Daniel. Daniel comes into the palace before the king. You know what the first thing Daniel does? The first thing Daniel does, he preaches a little sermon to Belshazzar about how he had neglected God. And he goes back and rehearses for Belshazzar about his father and how God had dealt with his father and how Belshazzar, in all of his wealth, in all of his power, in all of his authority, in all of his security, how he had neglected God. And then he offers the interpretation. Drop down to verse 25. Verse 25, chapter 5. Here's the interpretation. And this is the writing that was written. Mini, mini, tekel, yepharison. This is the interpretation of the thing. Mini, God hath numbered thy kingdom and is finished. It's all over. King, with all of your wealth and all of your power and all of your security, it's all over. It's all over. Verse 27. Tico, thou art weighed in the balances and found wanting. Can it be possible? A king who has everything, a king who has absolute authority and absolute security, is it possible that something is lacking in his life? According to the handwriting on the wall, O oh, king, you may have everything, but when God weighs you in his balances, you come up lacking. Verse 28. Perez, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. Wow. Can you believe it? In the height of security, at a time when the king had absolutely no worries in the world, suddenly, instantaneously, the message is, Oh, king, you're not secure. Your kingdom is taken from you. And you stand before God, lacking. And then drop down to verse 30. In that night... Was Belshazzar the king of the Chaldeans slain? And Darius the Median took the kingdom, being about three score and two years old. Wow. At a point in time when life was secure, 
There was that feeling, everything is okay. Nothing can go wrong. I am secure. I have everything I can want. All I have to do is snap my fingers and I can have anything I want. And yet, in an instant's time, it's all gone. It's all gone. In that very night, his life was taken and his kingdom given over to the Medes and the Persians. One day Jesus made an amazing statement. Jesus said, A man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. After making that statement, Jesus goes on to tell a parable. And here's the parable. In the parable, there was a rich man, a rich farmer. His fields produced abundantly, had everything he could possibly want. In fact, he had more than he could handle. And he said to himself, well, look, I've done pretty good. I figured it all out. I figured all of my assets. You know, I've got everything. I can make it. And he said to himself, this is what I'm going to do. Don't have banks in those days, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to tear down all of my barns, and I'm going to be a great big barns. And I'm going to put all of my things in the barn. And once I put everything in that I could possibly need, then I'm going to sit back and say, so take thy knees. I mean, I figured it out. I put up enough that's going to last me the rest of my life. Now, it's eat, drink, and be merry. I am secure. I've got it made. I've worked hard. I put aside. I plan for the future. And now that I plan for the future, I have everything I could possibly need. Now I can just retire and live the rest of my life in luxury and security. Turn with me, if you will, to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 12. Look at verse 20. After he had figured all of his assets and he was so secure in what he had, he said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to retire. Take it easy. I've got it made. I am secure. Verse 20. But God said. <laughs> Makes a big difference, doesn't it? I say I am secure. I say I've got a job that, that is very, very secure. I know I can make it. I plan ahead. I plan my assets. I plan for my retirement. I put all of those things aside. I figure it all out, and I am very, very secure. I plan for the future. I know I can make it. But God said, and there's the difference. What we think and what God says. There's just one little thing that he had not figured into his future. One little thing. He had planned for financial security. He had planned. He knew he could make it. He had everything figured out to the nth degree. But there's <coughs> one thing that he had left out. Do you know what it is? Look at verse 20. God said unto him, Thou fool. Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall all these things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. The one thing that most people fail to figure in when they talk about security, is the very thing this man failed to figure in. He listed all of his assets. He's a rich man. He has everything he could want. He knows that. I mean, he could sit down with any financial advisor, and they would say to him, you've got it made. I mean, you have planned ahead. You've, you've figured in all of the, the increases that could possibly have. You've got it made. But God said... You're a fool. You're a fool. And the reason he was a fool 
in all of his planning, in all of his provisions, he had left God out. Left God out of his life. Hear me, no matter how secure you believe your future to be, it can change in a moment time. No matter how secure it is. You may be just graduating from college with tremendous ideas and tremendous abilities and a great future. Or you may be in your middle age or even in your early years and you said, I planned ahead and I, I know I've got it made. I can do it. I can make it. Let me assure you that everything can change in just a moment time. Think of Belshazzar. No one could have been any more secure in his future than he was. And yet, at a time when his future was secure, he didn't have to worry about a thing. In a moment, in a moment's time, it all changed. And God said, you are weighed in my balances and you've forgotten something. God was left out. The rich man Jesus told the parable about. He had it made. I mean, he planned. He, he figured everything down to the T. He knew. He knew. Even with inflation, he could retire and have it made. But what he didn't figure in was the fact that I may die today. I may die today, and what plans have I made for my future? How secure is my future? Weighed in the balances and found wanting. The best of times can become the worst of times in a fraction of a second. There are many today who have believed themselves to be very, very secure in their occupation, in their job. Two months ago, today I walk in the streets without a job, fearing for their future. There are others today who have believed, I've got it made, I'm well on the way, I've sat down, I've got it all figured out, I'm on my way, I've got a proven plan, I'm working toward that. And hear me, there have been thousands, literally thousands, with a good head on their shoulders that have gone down that same road. And in a fraction of a second, their life was gone. Secure. I don't have to worry about it. I know I can make it. But in a moment's time, their life was gone. If your plans for the future do not include a provision for life eternal, you're not ready for the future. You aren't secure in your future. I don't care who you are. I don't care how much you have. I don't care how secure your future may be. Listen, in just the snap of your finger, your life can be over. You see, death doesn't come calling just on the elderly. Death comes calling on teenagers, preteens, middle-aged, those very, very secure in their, in their position in life. Death comes quickly, sometimes without any warning whatsoever. And God says, thou fool. You made all of your plans, but you forgot the most important thing. You haven't planned for your future. You've only planned for tomorrow. And you may not have a tomorrow. You may not have a tomorrow. I know in these difficult times, you have to have been thinking about your future. If you've got any intelligence at all, you have to have been thinking about your future and how secure it may be. 
And I'm sure that most of us have gone through that time of thinking, what happens if I lose my job? What happens if, if I wake up tomorrow and I, I don't have a place to go? You have to be thinking about that. But have you thought about the fact that you may not have a tomorrow? Have you thought about the fact that you may not wake up in the morning? Have you ever thought about the fact that you may not even make it home today? God says to everyone who feels secure in their future, and you have left God out. Oh, you may have joined the church. That doesn't mean a thing to God. Don't mean a thing to God. If you have not made plans in your, in your future for eternal life, God will say to you one day what he said to the rich young fool. Thou fool. Thou fool. You failed to plan for the most important part of your life. And we have to know that the future, no matter what we have, no matter how much we have, is not secure. We have to know that. You have to know that. You cannot live in difficult economic times that we live in and not know that. God says, there is that time when you may be so secure, but when I weigh you in my balances, you come up on the short end. You haven't really made plans for the future. You haven't really made plans for Jesus Christ. I don't know what's going to happen in the future. And it may be that every one of us here today, we may have to adjust our standard of living. We may have to do that. But listen, this one thing I know, I have a future. I know that. I, there's no doubt in my mind, there's no question in my mind. I know I have a future. I know that. I have a future because of Jesus Christ. I have a future because of Christ. I know that I may not make it home. I know that in just a fraction of a second, my life can be gone. I know that. How will I stand before God? How will I stand before Him? Listen, when that time comes that we stand before God, listen to me, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how much you have accumulated in life. It doesn't matter you can stand before God and say, God, you know, I was all of it. That don't mean a thing to God. He don't care who you are. He don't care what you have. It all belongs to Him anyhow. When you stand before God one day, there's only one thing God's going to be interested in. Have you made plans for eternity? If you haven't, I don't care how secure tomorrow may be. If you haven't made plans for eternity, you're going to stand one day where Belshazzar stood. You're going to stand before God and God's going to say, Listen, you had it made. You had everything you could want. You had power. You had authority. You had security. But when I weigh you in my balances, you're not ready. You're not ready. And only death <coughs> in a literal burning hell fire will await us. Don't allow the best of times to become the worst of times for you. It can happen in a split second. You have to know that. It can happen in a split second. In making your plans for security, Go back and take another look. Take another look down inside your heart. Is your heart right with God? Do you know for sure that your sins are forgiven? Do you know without a shadow of a doubt that today, if I never take another breath, if I never take another breath, when I stand before God, it's going to be all right. I've made my plan. If you can't say that, you're not ready for the future. You have no security. 
Because you know, every ounce of security you have for this life can be gone in the snap of your finger. Only one thing really matters. When you plan for security, only Christ offers real security in real life. In just a few moments, we're going to sing a closing hymn. <coughs> and as we sing this closing hymn, I want all of us to look within our heart. Where do we stand before God right now? Maybe these are the best of times. Maybe everything is going great in your life. Maybe physically, financially, in every other way, you are secure. But you know that can be gone before you leave this place today. You also know, and I'm not trying to frighten you, I'm just simply telling you the fact. You may not have another tomorrow. If not, when you stand before God, do you have that security, that knowing that I'm going to have you try, I'm going to live forever in God's kingdom? If you don't know that, if you haven't made those plans, let me invite you this morning, no matter who you are, to step out and you come to this altar and say, Lord, I know that somehow I'm not ready. But I'm making my plans right now, today, for eternity. I'm asking Christ to come into my life and forgive me my sins right now. I'm making my plans for eternity. And you can through Christ our Lord. Father, I'm thankful for the Word of God. Lord, we do live in very, very difficult times economically. And none of us can really, really be sure, even about the tomorrow, about our jobs, our vocation, our standard of living. We cannot really be secure in that. But we can know. We can know. We can be absolutely sure that we have made plans for eternity. Father, just now, by your Holy Spirit, move in each of our lives individually. Challenge us, Lord. And if we're not ready, if we're not ready, speak to us now. Make us aware of that fact. And then, Lord, may we not leave the church today before we settle the account. We plan for our eternity through Christ our Lord. Speak to us now as we make our decisions for Christ. In Jesus' name, amen.